Jose Jones, Jones. that record. Yeah, that's that's I'm telling you. I mean, he, he, that's the type of guy that could do it. Tune in game days for the Bud Light pregame tailgate right here on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. University Book Exchange, UPE for ECU. University Book Exchange. UBEandPirateWear.com offers a large selection of ECU apparel. There's a new selection of hats, t-shirts, and tailgate supplies. Plus, the online store at PirateWear.com has been redesigned to serve you better. UBE and PirateWear.com, located in the heart of Uptown Greenville and proud supporters of the Pirates for over 35 years. This is Ashley, and on behalf of the Whole Shimmer Boutique crew, we would like to say thank you for voting us Best Gift Shop and Best Women's Boutique in 2020. We could not have done it without you, and we hope that you will shop with us this holiday season. Shimmer carries a wide variety of men's, youth, women's clothing, and jewelry, as well as home goods. Shimmer is your one-stop shop for the whole family this holiday season. Plus, we will always offer complimentary gift wrapping. Shimmer Boutique, located on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks, in Winterville besides New River Pottery, and in Jacksonville's Mall. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports-watching drink of all time, Pepsi. Designed to power even the most passionate of armchair quarterbacks, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong, keep you in the zone, and recover from those triumphant wins. Before, I was just your average football fan. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm a football-watching MVP. Nothing can stop me from cheering my team on to victory or overreacting when the ref makes a bad call. What do you mean he wasn't in? That looks like two feet to me. With refreshing deliciousness, especially for formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi is the premier football-watching beverage. I used to care when Mike cheered so hard he spilled nacho cheese on my carpet or wiped buffalo sauce on my new couch. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm so in the zone, even Mike can't ruin my football party. (sighs) See? Don't even care. So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football-watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. While other folks come and go, Greenville Pool and Supply has been your local pool store in Greenville and Eastern North Carolina for over 40 years. Are you finding yourself spending more time at home than ever before? If so, turn your backyard into a vacation destination. Greenville Pool has pools for any size backyard. Choose from the very popular fiberglass, classic vinyl, or custom concrete. If you order your pool now, it could be in by this spring. If you're ready for a pool, contact the pros at Greenville Pool and Supply supply. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Pirate fans, welcome to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Be sure to visit one of ECU graduate Brandon Tate's Platinum Certified U.S. Cellular stores and experience the highest standard of customer service. Call in on the live line at 317-1250. Now, with a complete recap of the game and your phone calls, live from the Pirate Radio Studios, here's your host of the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter, Clip Brock. All right, winding down the final seconds in Cincinnati, it was all Bearcats tonight. 49 17 pirates tack on a late score there as uh 49 17 the score cincinnati gonna move to seven and zero on the year ecu gonna drop to one and six after this one it was a brutal night for the offense it was not a great night for the defense luke fickle decides to fake a punt late in the game might get some calls about that but it was all cincinnati from start to finish tonight We'll talk about it here on the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show. Give us a call, 317-1250. Lines are open, so you can jump in now. 317-1250. We're back with the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show after this. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak fair. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get the latest phones free. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Chico! Ha-ha! Rebound! Rebound! 
Chico's Mexican Restaurant is the home of the best margaritas. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Tuesday for the Gulp of Mexico, a huge 46-ounce lime margarita for only $6.99. On Thursdays, relax and enjoy half-priced pitchers of Chico's house margaritas. Choose from lime, strawberry, blood orange, raspberry, or peach. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. Temperatures are in the low 30s at 10 a.m., increasing sharply to 75 degrees by 1 p.m., and then dropping into the teens by 10 p.m. So before you go to work, put on some gloves, pack some shorts, and a parka that should cover you for the day. Your heating and cooling is taking a beating. Guarantee your family's comfort all fall and winter with a new train system. It's hard to stop a train. For a limited time, get a new train system with 0% financing for 60 months. Go to DelcorInc.com for more information. Delcor, the service professionals. See your independent train dealer for details. Call one 888 for details. Wouldn't it be great if you could get auto, home, life, and business insurance all from one agency? Well, that's where the Gavigan Agency comes in. They can help protect what is important to you. So why not simplify your life? See the Gavigan Agency in Greenville or give them a call today at 252-756-1400. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. If you thought you saw the last of Double Cheeseburger Pizza, think again. Because it's back at Papa John's again with a large double cheeseburger pizza for just 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, order the new Double Cheeseburger Pizza for only $12. The new Cheeseburger Pizza is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Pirate Radio. Give us a chance. We're going to be different. We're going to play with a lot of fire and intensity, and we're not going to back down from anybody. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Cliff Brock. All right. Update from our commercial break. A lot has happened. Cincinnati has scored a touchdown. Cincinnati has missed an extra point. Looks like our final is going to be 55-17 to tonight as Cincinnati dominates the Pirates at Nippert Stadium. 317-1250 the number. And we have open lines if you want to jump in. We have three open lines, 317-1250. Coach Rick Smith up with us late tonight. Coach, thanks for hanging out with us here on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. Appreciate it. Uh, it's early yet. It's early yet, he says. <laughs> All right, I like it. The night is young. Uh, Coach, uh, a few thoughts uh, from you on this game before we get rolling tonight. Well, just watching the game, I was, you know, Cincinnati is really good. Uh, But there was, you know, you go into every game thinking, you're telling your defense, you know, let's don't get, you know, we we can't give up explosive plays, which to me an explosive play is, you know, it's a little bit different than some people. But any pass over 25 yards and a run over 15 is the way I did it. And some people just say all 20s. But just about every series, uh, I mean, it was just they did what they wanted to. I mean, it was long passes, long runs. Uh, just uh, we we couldn't stop them on defense. Got a lot of uh, third down and, and manageable situations for the defense, but Ritter was able to run out of them or either hit a receiver as uh, he, he was uh, solid tonight, the quarterback from Cincinnati. All right, 317-1250. Craig is up first tonight in Richmond. Hey, Craig. Hey, guys. Good evening. How are you? All right. Uh, no, I was going to ask that, right? Hey, uh, so I just wanted to talk about a couple things. Um, you know, overall, the game, we were outmatched, obviously. But uh, the onside kick, I thought that was frustrating for me. I didn't think it was a good call. I thought we were playing pretty decent up until that point. Um, I thought we were still in the game at that point, actually, um, which led to one of the targeting calls that I thought was ridiculous. Um, maybe it wouldn't have changed the game, the two targeting calls, but it did cost two of our players playing time. 
which they could have probably used, and, and one of our linebackers, which we probably needed as well. Um, I hate the time left at the half with timeouts left. This is the second week in a row we've done that. I think it sends the wrong message to the team. I think, you know, we should at least try to put points on the board, you know, in that situation, don't leave time on the clock or timeouts in your in your pocket. Uh, the fake punt, you know, people are going to say, well, that was classless or whatever. But really, if I'm pickled, I don't want to watch our offense play anymore either. So he probably just wanted to watch his kids play. Um, what gives me hope, though, is we should have three wins uh, in reality. Our staff and players have proven that they can compete. Uh, we just need to find that never-quit attitude, and our young our young players are impressive. So, I mean, that's what I have for the game. Other than, I mean, you can go into the offense and defense and all that stuff, but really those are the things that stuck out to me in the game. All right, a few key points there uh, from Craig. Thanks for the call, Craig, and, and we'll hit these one by one with uh, Coach Smith. He first mentioned the onside kick coach, and that came after an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for Cincinnati. So the kickoff was all around the, what, 40 or 50-yard line, I guess the 40-yard line. So they had those uh, those yards made up there. They decided to go ahead and go for an onside at that point. He says, uh, you're playing decent at that time. You're in the game. Go ahead and kick it deep. That's what I would have done. Uh, but <laughs> That's know, not what they did. That's not what they did. <laughs> Another thing, and I'm interested to hear your take here from a defensive perspective, you don't want the score to be any worse before the half and throw three incomplete passes and give them any kind of time at the half but that is the second straight week where ecu has kind of just said okay let's run the clock out at halftime and tr- instead of try to score what, what's your take on that i would have tried to score yeah i meant when you're you know i would have tried to score even if i was up i mean that's just the way i am and if you got that much time and they were around the what 40 yard line yeah. they had to the play to cj and the flag yeah, one, one, yeah they were one 15 yard completion and you're kicking the field goal yeah they had a completion to cj and there were some offset and penalties right there but uh they they had managed in field position right there to do something yeah. at least get three points or maybe get seven depending you know, i was on the- shocked that we just stood there too you know and let the clock run out I'm, you know maybe if you're you know if you're up you know 10 points and you know do that i was i, I I can't explain that one. <laughs> now, the fake punt, that's a touchy subject. The um, Cincinnati, the game is over at that point. They run a fake punt there in the fourth quarter, Coach. And uh, how do you feel about it as a guy that coached all those years? If they run a fake punt, you ought to be able to stop it. Right. I, I don't blame them. Uh, it's our job to stop it. Just like if uh, we'd have ran a fake punt on them and it worked, it's their job to stop it. I mean, uh when I was a high school coach, I learned that lesson very well from uh, a great football coach at Leon High School. Gene Cox had won more games. He'd won 350-something games, more than anybody in the state of Florida. And I, for some reason, he liked me. And I was a young head coach in high school, and, and we played them. And a couple, you know, I never beat him, but I always, my kids played real hard, so he liked me. And uh, I remember he told me that. He said, you know, people accuse me of running the score up on people. But, you know, they got 11 and I got 11. And There's still my, time on the clock, right? My kids call a play. If they score, I'm not going to get mad at them yeah. if my team scores. It's the, it's the other dang's team, the other team's job to stop me. Mike you Houston know? and uh, Luke <laughs> Fickle had a lengthy conversation after the game we just saw, and it was seemed pretty cordial. And yeah, we talked about that clip, but we were we uh, we were mentioning right toward the end of the game would Mike Houston say something to Luke Fickle, and it looks like they might have talked about it a uh, short bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's like Coach said. I mean, just you know, you're out there to play football, play football. Yeah. So you know, whatever Cincinnati did to us that we didn't like, that's our fault. Yeah. Uh, there's still time on the clock, and and there will be a future games. Let's let's pay them back once we uh, take them uh, on again on the football field. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. We have open lines. If you have a question, comment, or thought on this game, give us a call three one seven twelve fifty. We will keep it right here because I believe we have a call. So once again, uh, we will uh, be taking your calls until the last caller is served here on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. All right, uh, and we're getting a couple of calls in now on the Fixed NC live line. We got uh, Zach in Charlotte. Are we ready to go to Zach, Shirley? All right, let's go to Zach. Hey, Zach. Hey, guys. Uh, First of all, I want to say that I think it's sad that the most aggressive 
thing that we saw uh, tonight from anybody in purple and gold was the fact that uh, Coach Houston did not shake Luke Fickle's hand. Um, that is the most aggressive thing that I saw. Um, and I just I really want to go back. I called after the Georgia uh, State game, and um, I, I asked Coach and I asked you, when we make that call to go straight to Garcia, and I know that he didn't look ready um, after uh, or after the Navy game. You know, he he looked uncomfortable passing the ball. But what do you lose by uh, by playing a true freshman and getting him reps? Um, and I know that people's argument was that you know he didn't look ready, he didn't look like he had the experience. But you're not going to get the guy uh, who has experience unless you throw him in the game. That's like asking somebody for five years of experience whenever it's an entry level job, you know, and, uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I'm, 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 Oh, hey, ah, sorry. Thank you, Colin. Uh, shout out to my buddy Colin here for, uh, giving me the play by play here. The fake punt. What a douche move. Uh, I'd like to end on that. Have a great night. All right. Yeah, I'm glad Colin handed you those words. All right, Zach and Charlotte. Um, what do you have to lose? You, you have to lose a football game. Mike Houston, how, what is his job security like? It should be pretty good, but he doesn't want to go one and whatever this year. He's going to give the quarterback that gives him the best chance to win playing time. Right now, he feels that is Holt Nailers. Uh, we did see Mason Garcia in the game later. Now with a couple games left, Coach, maybe you see a little bit more of Garcia, but this staff is still trying to win some ball games. Yeah, and it, if the game's out of hand, yeah, I would play Garcia. That's just me. Now, what happens if if Ayler's on the next play? You know, or the next at practice, something gets hurt. That's my only point. If yeah. you're getting beat that bad, play the kid. And he got in for you a know, drive tonight. That's it good. Handed it off, and you know, there's been some games to where you know he didn't get in. Right. So, no, I'm glad he got in. I was driving down here, so I didn't see the end of the ball game. And uh, no doubt, uh, Holton struggled tonight, mate. And, and the interceptions were were ugly. But but if uh, if Mike Houston thinks Garcia gives him a shot and and feels comfortable with him behind an offensive line that is really depleted right now, then uh, then he'll get some reps. Uh, don't I want to disagree with Zach right quick? Not fully, but something I saw aggressive tonight was the play of Keaton Mitchell. Uh, tip of the hat to him tonight. Uh, the freshman running back played a hell of a game tonight. So. Uh, I think, did you say, Cliff, he got to 100 yards tonight? He did, 124 yards and a touchdown for the freshman Keaton Mitchell. ECU uh, was able to run the ball for over 200 yards tonight. Rajay Harris had 84 yards. Uh, like the, They moved the ball at times, but back-breaking interceptions. They had three interceptions. Hold Naylor's tonight, 9 for 20, 87 yards passing. They were able to run for 206 yards. So just crazy numbers tonight in this football game. How, how do you run for 206 yards and get beat that bad? Yeah, Jeez. that doesn't make a lot of sense. 317-1250. Tell you what, Shirley is lining up the calls. Rohan and Cameron, hang on. Let's take a time out when Shirley's uh, ready to go here, and uh, we'll get a break in. We will uh, come back. Still got some Parker's Barbecue in the back. They hooked us up with some chicken and uh, some barbecue earlier, so... For your Saturday football viewing, make sure you check out Parker's, parkersbbq.com, and uh, enjoy some of their food on Saturday. All right, Mike, Cameron, Rohan, we're coming to you right when we return after this. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizza, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. 
Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store, locally owned and operated, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is former ECU tight end Bryce Williams from my friends at the Auto Store Group. Thanksgiving is coming up, and the Auto Store Group wants to feed your family with our turkey giveaway. For a chance to be a winner, simply go to asgcars.com backslash turkey giveaway and fill out the registration form. There is no purchase necessary, and winners will be announced on Saturday, November 21st. Wouldn't a free turkey this year be awesome? Sign up today at asgcars.com backslash turkey giveaway. The Auto Store Group. Go Pirates! Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke. Everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. What's the big deal, deal? Where can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just five ninety nine each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand toss pizza and the marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, going! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's too, where you can mix and match two or more. Five ninety nine each at Domino's. Two item minimum pan pizza bone and wings and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. This is Coach Steve Shankweiler, offensive line coach for East Carolina University football. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250, the number on the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Call-In Show. Clip Brock, Rick Smith here following the 55-17 to Cincinnati win over East Carolina tonight. Got uh, Shirley Rhodes, Chandler Honeycutt here. Coach, uh, you got your notes there. We, we'll go over those stats on the UB stat sheet at some point. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> yeah, a lot of long drives for the Bearcats tonight. Mike Cameron, hang on. Let's go to Rohan in Apex. Hey, Rohan. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Um, tough night. Obviously, it was kind of weird because like for most of the night, I wasn't even like mad because like I really just knew. Cincinnati was, like, a lot better than we were. I mean, they were ranked number seven in the nation for a reason. I'd watched a couple of their games, and, you know, secondary looked really good. That defense looked good. I mean, they were blowing out basically everyone that they played. But then the reason I ended up getting mad was towards the end of the game when, like, you know, like the people before me who called in were talking about that fake punt, and that fake punt was you know, obviously a weird call, but then even after that, their backup quarterback, he's still, like, throwing the ball deep, and then instead of at the end of the game just kneeling the ball, why are you still handing the ball off and getting long touchdown passes, or um, long touchdown runs, and, like, we're just trying to end the game. Like, I don't understand, like, what you're trying to do. Like, what is ultimately the difference between like winning a game forty two to ten and then fifty five to seventeen. Like, is that really gonna make a difference in your case 
especially against a one in five, now one in six football team, to like help you get into the playoff or a better New Year's Six game? Like, I don't understand what the thinking is. Like, obviously, you don't want to like stop playing, but like, there's just like some level of like basic decorum at the end of these games, right? Like, you kind of just like. You don't stop playing, but yeah, you just like kind of hand off the ball and like you're trying to end this game as fast as possible. Like people are just trying to like stop, and yet it's fourth down and you're at the 30 yard line. You just punt the ball back to the other team and they're going to run the ball and end this game as quickly as possible because everyone wants to just get home because I'm assuming it's cold in Cincinnati too. Like, and the game is no longer in doubt. Like, I just. That was the part of the game that pissed me off the most. It wasn't even necessarily the Pirates' performance. It was more just like the lack of class shown by Cincinnati in their victory. And it just, and I could tell like it pissed off Coach Houston too, because like if you watch the end of the game, he had a conversation with Luke Fickle and then decided not to shake his hand after he talked to him. And it was like obvious to me and to everyone who watched it, even the commentators made a comment about it. Like, they were like, that does not look like someone who respects that other man. Like, it's just, it pissed me off. I'm sure it pissed off a lot of other people. Um, I'm going to get off here, but that's just kind of how I feel right now. Thanks, guys. All right, Rohan and Apex. And, Coach, we already talked about the fake punt. Uh, at the end of the game, instead of taking a knee, running out of the clock, they do run a play. They score a touchdown on the play. Your thought is what? Stop them? Whose, whose job is it to stop them? We don't have a defense? Well, well, that's just my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I was a high school coach. I've had my butt kicked, you know, and coached, I've kicked, coached 40 something years, almost 50. And whatever the other team does, it's your job to stop them. And if you don't, you know, that, that's not their fault. And, I, you know, I yeah. just I don't understand why anybody'd be mad at the coach from Cincinnati. He, what's he supposed to do? Tell his damn kids to lay down. All right, there you go. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. Cameron is up in Greenville. Hey, Cameron. Jesus Christ, guys! Uh, I didn't know we had fans of a Powder Puff High School girls football team complaining, and being pissed off about them running up the score. Oh my God, man! This is freaking football. Uh, if you're more pissed off about them running up the score and you're an East Carolina fan, there's something that's wrong with you. We should be more pissed off at the fact that we have only won one freaking game. Now, I know that there's, we've had a lot of improvements. I really like what I've seen from some of these young guys throughout the season. We really should have three wins right now, but I don't blame Cincinnati for running up the freaking score. They're trying to make a playoff. They're trying to to, to make a statement, and we got to stop them. Oh my God, they had a walk-on running back run for 75 yards. Jesus Christ, stop them. Um, listen, like, it's, it's really, I could say a lot of things. People are going to say a lot of things. We're a very young team. Cincinnati is a very mature and experienced team. they got seniors all across their defense. They're a great team. They're one of the top ten teams in the country for a freaking reason. We're one in whatever. Uh, we got to put this in a realization that this is going to be a, a multi-year fix. I consider this truly as year one for Houston because this is his first full recruiting class, and I really like what I've seen from our young guys, but we got to put it in perspective. When you have four true freshmen out there on the defensive line playing, I mean, what do you expect, Cliff? And I know, Coach Smith, you're a defensive coach. What do you expect these, these young guys to do against a team like Cincinnati? I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. We got a lot of growing to do. I like what I see from the young guys. I hate that we're we, we're losing, but I've seen improvement. We just got to give Coach Houston time, and I really think that next year is when we should judge Houston on. We should judge Houston on next year and what we do when he gets the second year of recruiting in here. He gets some guys in the weight room. It's just we got to build on the defensive and offensive line because we do not have a defensive or offensive line, and that is the most important position in college football, in my opinion. Doesn't matter who we have at quarterback, Mason Garcia. Doesn't matter we have fucking the freaking Joe, Joe Namath. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is, guys. Uh, Got to just stick with it. Get used to it. Hold on, and I'm going to judge Coach Houston on next year. But anybody that wants to call in here and complain about Cincinnati running up the score, Jesus Christ, 
it's co- it's college football. It's not powder puff high school football. Go Pirates. Amen. All right, there is Cameron in Greenville. 317-1250. Mike is up next in Durham. Hey, Mike. Hey, what's up? Um, Someone's kind of ironic that said uh, we got to do a, a view from the booth. Sort of replay there with them two guys uh, from East Carolina. They said to hit him in the helmet. I said, I thought that was a Jeff Charles thing, review from the booth or from the booth or something like that. But look, that was two crappy calls, man. What if guys, I mean, you got five refs on the field and they can't see it and they got a review from the booth? I don't know. Did y'all see that earlier? I mean, it was, it was crazy on that one punt return and the other, um, the guy was just trying to make a play. But it seemed like they out of, they picked them out and like, it's a review from the booth. I never, I never heard from a review from the booth that they, you know, picked All out right. a penalty. Mike, Mike asking about the, uh, so there was no call on the field. And then they're buzzed down to say we may have a targeting, and then they review, and sure yeah. enough, uh, was that the Bruce Bivens, I believe, that, that was, was tossed that, on yes, that one? Yes, it's that either was the that one. one or the Terry. Yeah. On the oh, it could have been. I think he's talking about the uh, the Bruce Bivens. He's talking about the Bruce Bivens. Where Bruce, now in the official's defense, the Bruce, you know, dropped his head. Uh, yeah, and it, instead of keeping his eyes up and making contact with his face. And his chest, it, it was, it could have been called spearing, you know, spearing. Uh, but, you know, I'll, it was questionable because he didn't really make contact with his hat. But when he lowers his hat and he got, makes, he's going to shoot the guy with the top of his helmet. And the rule was put in to protect him just as much as the right. other kid because that's what i was saying injury. me and clint were talking about you know, it. I mean, the it, neck injury. it's a dangerous play Very like dangerous. bruce could hurt himself yeah. more than yeah. the he opponent the other kid in that case so uh and that is i guess the rule a targeting rule that if there's somebody up uh, behind the curtain the wizard of oz who sees it and then buzzes down and say we may have a targeting here and then they look at it so that is a rule mike yeah there's one official that sits up all by himself top of the press box and that's his whole job is to make the final decision on any penalty that's that's when he when the when the umpire goes over to look at a video replay of a play he also can talk to the man upstairs a guy i coached with in nfl europe peter voss he does a lot of our games that he's that guy that makes those decisions all right uh 317-1250 we'll keep the calls going jack is up in leland north carolina hey jack how you doing all right good good real quick um coach smith i do want to say i, I respect you and i think that you when you got rehired here it was one of the better moments in pirate football because i appreciate what you do um but I do need to ask you a question because, you know, this whole time you said, you know, it's our job to stop them. And in the fourth quarter with five minutes to go, they stopped them. And it was fourth down. And you said that, you know, as a coach, we have to stop them. And I get that. But as a coach also, would you call a fake punt up by 40 with five minutes to go in a game? I wouldn't. But if I was on the sideline and somebody did it against me, I would tell myself, well, it's my job to coach my players to not let that happen. That's the way I look at it. No, I wouldn't do it. I agree. It doesn't show a lot of class. But whatever the other team does, it's our damn job to stop them, period. All right, uh, Jack, anything else? Nope. Asked and answered. All right. uh, You want to take a break? We'll come back. Randy, Justin, and Steve will get to you next on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. We're back with your calls after this. (laughs) 
At Tiebreakers, we pride ourselves on serving big, big juicy wings. I'm talking big and juicy. Our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens' faces. If our chickens played football, they'd be linebackers. The competition's chickens, they'd be skinny little kickers. Trade those kickers in for linebackers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. Hey Pirate fans, this is Head Coach Mike Houston. The physicians at Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center have been taking care of our athletes here at East Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or if it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care, physical therapy, and diagnostic testing. For experienced and professional services, call the folks who have been taking care of me and many of our fans in Pirate Nation or visit them online at orthopedicseast.com. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new 2020 Cadillac Escalade and save over $18,000 off. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. With rates being historically low, now is the best time to buy or refinance your home. This is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. In MLS, 1719-250 and 685 for two. Equal housing lender. Ahoy, Mickey! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirate's Cove Fast Pass. The new Pirate's Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in Newburn is now open. Pirate's Cove in Newburn is offering Fast Passes for $9.99 for new Fast Pass customers. You can visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East 10th Street. And have you heard? Pirate's Cove on Fire Tower Road is now offering interior cleaning. So we have you surrounded. Pirates Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. Hi, this is Scott Muller with Clean Eats. Carol and I would like to personally thank all of you for supporting Clean Eats so well through these tough times. We are blessed to have such a great community helping us weather the storm. If you're having trouble consistently eating healthy, go to cleaneats.com and click on meal plans and give our tasty and affordable meals a try. Or stop by the cafe for lunch and let us show you just how simple and easy it is to get started and stay on track. Clean Eats, it's a lifestyle. 805 Red Banks Road, Arlington Village. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. This is former ECU football player Bryce Williams, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, lines locked and loaded here on a... uh, Friday evening, 11.35, and we have all our lines locked up at the moment on the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show. Clip Brock, Rick Smith here. If you have a question, comment, you can jump in when we clear one of these lines. Chris, Steve, Justin, hang on. Let's go to Randy in Seven Lakes. Hey, Randy. Hey, man. How's it going? Hey, I'm going to go against the grain here. Uh, I agree with you, Coach. Uh, I'm glad they ran up the score. Because you know why? I, I really hope that right there lights a fire under these guys' asses and gets them playing football. When I played football, I remember those exact things happening to us. And I remember we told ourselves that was not going to happen again. And, I mean, simple as that. I mean, play, you go out there to play football. I mean, who cares what, you know, you, it's your job to stop. And that's that's simple as that, and and if it humiliated you, then guess what? 
then maybe next time you'll play a little bit harder and it won't happen again. That's all I got to say. Well, I agree with you. And uh, when I was a high school coach, there was a the high school coach in Tallahassee at Leon High School was Gene Cox, and he was the winningest coach in the state of Florida. Had over 380 wins, and uh, he ran the score up on me my first year when I was head coach at Mariana High School, and I, I, you know, I took it the right way, and I said something to him. I said, Coach, uh, you know, you put 55 on us tonight. How do you feel? He said, Well, Coach, it's your job to stop me. He said, no matter who I play, I'm not ever going to tell my kids to lay down. When my offense goes out there, they go out there to score touchdowns. And it's your job as an opposing coach to get your defense to stop them. And if they don't, then I'm running the score up. I mean, he and, he, and I became very close friends with him. Uh, bless his heart, he's no longer with us. But he was a great coach in Florida. And, Coach, you, you said – somebody asked you point blank, would you run a fake field goal or a fake punt up by that much? You said no. But at the same time, if you're on the other side of it, stop them. Get off the field. That's right. Yeah. You know – Get the ball back. So I was in charge of uh, punt block. So that was something that I always prepared my punt block team for was fakes. You know, I mean, you can't just – you know rush the punter blind and not expect fakes and i guarantee you the guy in the press box the uh, cincinnati coaches in the press box were watching the other punts and they said hey we could score i believe it was uh it was mike ward who said it's been open since the first punt of the night i wasn't really paying attention but that isn't that isn't cincinnati's fault yeah that's our fault all right, 317-1250. I uh, just saw, and, and we're getting some post-game uh, comments and quotes, and we'll put them out on Pirate Radio. But Mike Houston, I thought this would happen, said the talk with Luke Fickle after the game was, uh, that was that's between us, was the quote. I uh, did add that it's, uh, he said it's 42-10. to 10. We were able to force a punt in that situation, ready to get the ball back for our offense. Obviously, I don't think anybody was expecting that, but we still have to be prepared, end quote. That's a good quote. I mean, yeah. you got to be prepared to stop. That's your job. Yeah. All right. Uh, Justin is up next in Greenville. Hey, Justin. Hey, how's it going? All right. So I just want to say that that fake punt, yeah, you got to be expected for it. You got to expect it. But as a betting man, that was a pretty good move by me because I had the over. But just as a ECU Pirate fan, that's terrible, and you got to be able to cover that no matter what the situation is. And I feel like we just we played terrible on both sides of the ball. We couldn't stop the ball. Uh, we couldn't really move the ball that much. We moved it a couple times. But I feel like a lot of us play calling. Um, I feel like we got to make some changes. I feel like our offensive line didn't do great at all. I saw sometimes that they rushed just three people, and they were getting pressure on Holton. Um, Holton didn't have much time to – throw the ball a lot and i just feel like we gotta we gotta step that up a little bit all right uh justin with the call there had the over uh and a lot of people were commenting that on the uh on the internet tonight uh 317 we have two open lines if you want to jump in steve is up in raleigh next hey steve hey guys i appreciate appreciate the show there um yeah i, I was glad to see uh Garcia get a little time there at the end of the game. I'd like to see the other guy get a maybe a series or something just for experience, you know. For them guys work themselves all week, and if the game's out of reach, you know, let them get a a series. So I was I was happy about that. But I thought I'd get your ideas, Coach. There, you know, I've been a Pirate fan for like forty five years. When I was in school there, Pat Dye had the wishbone. Uh, or Steve Logan, he was one of the first people to run the, the spread offense. And uh, he gave us a, an advantage there. And, and then, of course, when Lincoln Riley was there running the air raid, you know, one of the first people to do that. I, I just don't know if we've got the the horses to stand there and try to go toe-to-toe. And I, I don't know that with the exception of a couple of years when Skip Holtz ran kind of a conventional offense, that we've had the horses to just stand there toe-to-toe with people. We might have good first-string guys, you know, but the second string would fall off. It doesn't seem like we're very imaginative right now. We're not taking advantage. I think, I think the new fad, whatever is the, the RPO type thing, where you know the quarterbacks are running a little bit more. Uh, I, I really feel like we're not being too imaginative. 
And and it turns around, it keeps our defense on the field a heck of a lot more. I'd be kind of interested to see how many plays they were on the on the uh, field out there, and I think that wears them down as well. You know, we really didn't score ten points the whole game until the end, and I think some of it we just weren't real imaginative. We were up, you know, really kind of conventional and everything. And I don't know if East Carolina is going to have uh, a lot of success. Stand there and trying to do a conventional thing on offense, and, and it turns around and affects our defense as well. And I thought I'd uh, try to get the coach's viewpoint on that. All right, Steve, thanks for the call. Coach, I got 21 passes, 50 rushes. That's 71 plays. And again, you have 87 passing yards in 71 plays, 206 running yards. A lot of those were, like he said, uh, kind of basic running plays yeah. up the middle, um, you know, maybe off guard, off tackle, I guess. And, uh, I think Mike Houston wants to have the bodies and the horses, as he said, to run that kind of offense. His point is we don't have it currently on this roster. Right. And, you know, like the first year he got here. Uh, I mean, you that, want to have the O-line that, conversation again. And that, I, yeah. year, that year that he got here, I mean, recruiting is almost over. I mean, right. you know, so really his first recruiting class was the second one. Yeah. And they're all freshmen. And I mentioned the other day uh, – Cincinnati's defense has eight seniors, and five of those seniors are redshirt seniors, so they've been in their program for six years. Uh, You know, we only have three seniors on our offense. And I mentioned the other day that for you people that that haven't coached, it's like a freshman is a first grader, a fifth-year senior is a fifth grader. Now, do you want a first grader in a fist fight with a fifth grader? He's going to get his butt kicked every time. And, you know, Coach Houston's doing a good job. His kids have just got to grow up, and we got to keep recruiting and get the best players we can. Yeah, and again, this is not the, the final product of what Mike Houston wants to do here. He wants to have a tough, physical running football team. And again, they're able to run the ball tonight. But but how empty are those yards? <laughs> Coach, you said 206 rushing yards. How the heck do you get beat that bad? But Mistakes. The numbers are the numbers. All right, 317-1250. Chris is up in Washington. Hey, Chris. Hey, man. So I've got a couple of things. So number one, you know, Cincinnati, I feel like the whole fake punt and the, the running it up there at the end was pretty classless. Now I agree with Coach that we should stop it. You know, that's definitely our job for sure. I wouldn't have done it, but I felt like it was pretty classless. Second thing, um, biggest thing we got to think about is self-control of our guys. Uh, my heart rate went up after the fake punt. And so the fact that Coach Houston and the team and the coaches could keep everybody down and we didn't have a bunch of flags and a bunch of anger and a bunch of fist thrown and things like that, that, that between that and the end of the game, I thought that was great. Um, third thing is, you know, I've been watching the Pirates play my whole life and I think that, you know, we've got a lot of ground to make up and a lot of changes to make uh, following Coach Mo and, uh, Jeff Confer and you know we just as fans need to be patient it's going to take time you know the team the, everything was decimated and we really have to rebuild that and I think the coach and the team and the players are believing at this point and we're kind of back in that 91 92 era where we believe again and we just need to stick with it and see where it goes all right Chris appreciate the call I thought Chris made a lot of good points I agree with basically everything he said and it's hard to preach patience but it is true i mean you got to rebuild this thing from where it was and you talked about how bad it was coach because you were there uh but that's just the the reality of the situation well i know i've told this story before but i i never thought i would retire i thought that i would coach until they towed me out of my, my coaching office or i died on the field but it was so bad that first year with Montgomery that I went in after three weeks and resigned and he asked me to stay through the end of the year and that's why I retired uh, I'm telling you the three years those three years this program went to to hell I'm telling you and it's going to take Coach Houston and, and I promise you that coaching staff's doing everything they can do and so are those kids but when you're playing with a bunch of young kids and you're playing seniors you know you're playing young kids and they're playing seniors it's just tough 317-1250 one more and we'll take a time out let's get ethan in chesapeake hey ethan hey guys i'm not gonna ask 
how y'all are doing because we're all feeling the same way right now. Um, I'm I'm torn. I'm really torn, y'all, on the directions that we're going to have to take to get this program back to where it needs to be. Uh, but a couple things. I'm I'm not sure if our biggest problem right now on offense is the quarterback or the offensive coordinator. It seems like Holt Naylor's a lot of times, I understand we have like a patchwork offensive line. We're down our two, our two starting offensive tackles. We've got a walk-on center who's a great feel-good success story, great for a Hallmark movie with Christmas right around the corner. But I don't know, it just, it just feels like our starting quarterback is as a third-year starter, second year in the system, should not be making some of these decisions that he's doing. He's throwing a d- double coverage. He's just throwing the ball up with reckless abandon, like hoping C.J. Johnson comes down with it. Um, he's taking costly sacks that he should be able to throw the ball away. He's, I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if. I know since he's a good defense, like I, I don't think they're that good. Like they'll they'll probably play for the New Year's Six game. They're definitely not getting the playoffs. Just how it is. Um, I, I'm just I'm just not sure. But the, the other thing I'm just not sure about. I'm I'm not sure if Donnie Kirkpatrick is is the guy um, to be our offensive coordinator. Our offense has just been out of sync for weeks now. We we play conservative at times, and then we have random bouts of aggression like who, who's going to run a reverse in the in the fourth quarter down 32 points you know where where was that reverse to Hatfield earlier in the game it just it just doesn't make sense like what what we're doing um and then part of that going back to Holton like I'm I'm not sure like if if his footwork is the best if his mechanics are off but I, I just don't know if Donnie's that guy I think we need to seriously evaluating the offseason about bringing in like a quarterback coach an offensive coordinator that is proven to have had success developing quarterbacks i'm not sure if donnie was that guy like i know he's a great pirate like he's probably one of the best wide receiver coaches we've ever had if, if you look at the guys i'm just not sure if he's yeah. the quarterback guru that we need right now and I, I don't know. We, we, we've got some big decisions to make in the off season. I'll, I'll just shut up and let y'all talk. All right, Ethan. All right. And then we've seen that if Mike Houston feels like a uh, something should go a different way, he will pull the trigger. He did it on Bob Trot year one at defensive coordinator and brought in Blake Harrell, and he will reevaluate things. I'm sure after this season as well. Uh, you, you can't really sugarcoat the uh, the whole Naylor's performance tonight. Nine for 20, 87 yards, three interceptions. And, you know, he's working with a, uh, a struggling offensive line. He's, he's trying to force things. But uh, the the improvement, the next step uh, that we've hoped to see from Holt Naylor's, we just haven't seen. I keep going back to if the coaches think there's a better quarterback on the roster and a better option, they'll they'll put him in. And, and they have not shown they want to do that yet. So. As far as Donnie goes, I mean, I, you know, you, yeah. you can speak well, to that as a coach. I don't think – whatever problems, I don't think it's Donnie's fault. That's just my opinion. I mean, I worked with Donnie for five years, and uh, he's a hell of a football coach. Uh, you know, I don't know all the coaches on the staff. <clears throat> I do know Steve Shankweiler. I know Donnie Kirkpatrick. I know Trip Weaver, coaches of the secondary. Those are the only three that I know personally – uh, and you know they've been successful everywhere they've been. They're good coaches. Uh, I don't know the rest of it. I know those three can coach. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. Let's go to John. Or right, you want to take a break? Let's take a break. John, Tom, Gary, Brian, hang on. We'll get to your calls when we return on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. We're back after this.
Hi, this is Billy Parker, and football is here. Tailgate at home with family and friends this season and let Parker's Barbecue do all the cooking. While tailgating at your house, let us provide all the food with our delicious chicken, barbecue, seafood, and sides. We can customize packages for any size group, big or small. Give us a call today and place your order. Parker's and football, a winning combination. Also, shipping nationwide at parkersbbq.com. Parker's Barbecue is how friends and family come together. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes, and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports-watching drink of all time, Pepsi. Designed to power even the most passionate of armchair quarterbacks, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong, keep you in the zone, and recover from those triumphant wins. Before, I was just your average football fan. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm a football-watching MVP. Nothing can stop me from cheering my team on to victory or overreacting when the ref makes a bad call. What do you mean he wasn't in? That looks like two feet to me. With refreshing deliciousness, especially for formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day. Pepsi is the premier football watching beverage. I used to care when Mike cheered so hard he spilled nacho cheese on my carpet or wiped buffalo sauce on my new couch. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm so in the zone even Mike can't ruin my football party. <sighs> See? Don't even care. So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Medicare is not one size fits all, but which plan is right for you? Hi, I'm Denise Walker and I'm a licensed insurance agent here in North Carolina. Whether you are turning 65, new to Medicare, or already have a plan, I can help you compare your Medicare options. I can help you find a plan offering low to no monthly premiums, prescription drug coverage, and a wide range of additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and more. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Did you know your small change can make a difference? The next time you visit McDonald's, please consider rounding up for the Ronald McDonald House. Your change adds up and can help many folks in eastern North Carolina. Just $10 can provide a free night stay for families with sick children here in eastern North Carolina and across the state. Just ask your cashier at checkout or choose to round up for RMHC when ordering through the McDonald's app. Thank you for visiting your local McDonald's owned by Dixon Foods and for your support of the Ronald McDonald House of East. Eastern North Carolina. Enjoy the warm air circulating moments after you turn up the heat. Precise control of cooking temperatures. Enough hot water on demand for everyone's shower. The instant glow of warmth when you turn on your fireplace or fire pit. Never having to change a gas tank on your outdoor grill. Experience the affordable luxury of natural gas. Find out more at GUC.com. Welcome aboard the Pirate Ship of Fun. Pirate Radio. Prepare for the adventure of a lifetime. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250. Calls are hot tonight. The lines are hot tonight. After a Pirate loss, 55-17. to to Cincinnati and uh, we'd like to hear from you. Thank you for staying up late with us tonight, calling in and uh, and supporting our great sponsors here at Pirate Radio and the fifth quarter. All right, Brian, Gary, Tom, hang on. Let's go to John in Washington. Hey, John. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, look, I'm just calling. How long do we continue to stick with Hope? You know, he's a hometown boy. We love him. We want him to be successful, but he's just not getting the job done. How long, you know, I'm kind of piggybacking off of Ethan here, but, you know, couldn't we move him to tie it in, bring the Garcia kid in, um, you know, see how things work there. You know, things just ain't, he, he ain't getting the job done. And, uh, you know, we're trying to win some football games. <laughs> Hold on, my dog is going after possum. I got to go. Uh, <laughs> let me know what you think. I'll talk to you later. Bye. 
I mean, look, it, it happened. It's happened to all of us when the dog goes after a possum. Amen. You know, I mean, it just it, it's a common occurrence. Uh, move holding the tight end, put Garcia in at quarterback again, and and I'll let Coach give his thoughts. Mine are if if they think Garcia gives them the best chance to win right now, they'll put him in. Now with only two games left, there's no red shirt or anything. Maybe you'll see more Garcia. Clearly, the coaches think Holden Naylor's gives them the best opportunity to win right now. Uh, but coach, what, what's your take on? I agree. What he Holt, had to say? Holton gives them the best chance to win, and it's <clears throat> you know you win as a team, you lose as a team. Now, how many times did was Holton able just to stand back there for two and a half seconds and throw the ball? Not a lot. Not a lot. I, I, I mean, he was he was pressured, and some and Cincinnati. Now they didn't they didn't run a lot of you know full out blitzes but now they they ran five man pressure quite a bit and six man pressure which is a blitz but but i kind of agree i would give the garcia kid you know when you're getting beat as bad as we're getting yeah beat you know i would put him in the game just to get him some experience because what happens next week if if holton goes down you know yeah that's and I'm, i mentioned that yesterday on the radio show uh you know, if you're getting that getting beat that bad, then put the other kid in, let him get some reps, and if something happens, then he's had a few more reps and he's ready to help you win. <clears throat> All right, the dog chasing after the possum is a first one. That that's great. All right, Tom is up next in Greenville. Hey, Tom. Hey, hey. how are you guys doing? I'm going to come at this a little bit differently. This is like a lost year in space for football at East Carolina because of COVID. And we've always done more with less, but now we're doing a lot less with a lot less than we've actually had. We've got people being furloughed. We've got strength and conditioning coaches being furloughed. And there's a good possibility after the season we're going to have football coaches furloughed too because we just don't have the money. And you guys know people over in the in Ward like I know them. And you, and you know what they're saying over there. And it's not going to get any better. And this is what really scares the heck out of me is that we're financially, we're below whale poop, and that's at the bottom of the ocean right now, and it's not going to get any better anytime soon. So I don't know what's going to happen in the off season. And we're asking people to donate money just just to, to even, not even come close to breaking even with scholarship money. We've got a beautiful facility, but the facility does nothing for the football players. It, we got a wonderful south side, but we might as well, like I said about four weeks earlier, we could make premium student housing up there because there's not going to be anybody up there to go up there and, and, and spend money. So I don't know what we're going to do with this program. I, I'm 75 years old. I may never live long enough to see the program come back. And, and one thing that I want to say, we've, we've never been a great program. We've been a good program. We've been a giant killer. And people, for some reason, lost sight of that, and they think that we're going to be out there with the SEC players, and we're not. We're not. We're, we're, we are not going to play at that level. Now, we can have good eight, seven, eight, nine season wins. How when Skip ran conference, you know, took the conference UAA championships, we lost games we should have won. But we were the champion. So I just, I, I don't know where we're going to go, but it's kind of frustrating. So I'll just hang up and listen. Thank you. All right, some big picture thoughts there from Tom and Greenville outside of the, the field of play, Coach. I, I agree with some of the things that he said. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we're not we're not in Alabama. Not ever going to be in Alabama. Uh, you know, we're East Carolina. We're in a conference that, you know, can pay some money to us. But they're struggling right now, too, because there's nobody in the games. There's nobody right. at the gates. Yeah. Uh, you know, like at East... East, our stadium holds 50,000, but right now, what are they? You can have 3,500. 3,500. So we are losing money every day. Yep. And, uh, you know, our players are, are still on scholarship, and, you know, their room and board still being paid. Their meals are b- being paid, uh, but they're not going to, you know, all their classes are online. Uh so it's it's a it's a it's a weird year, uh, and I worry about East Carolina trying to survive, you know, money wise. Very good point. Three one seven twelve fifty. Gary is up in Clayton. Hey, Gary. 
Hey guys, I just had a couple of questions. I hadn't been able to find anybody to explain this to me. So I hear a lot about Mike Houston being a great coach and, you know, we got a young team, but didn't we have the same offense on the field this year that we had last year versus Cincinnati and they had the exact same defense that they had last year? It seems like we've regressed. Maybe there's one or two linemen. Yeah, you were without Noah Henderson and Deontay Smith. Outside of that, it was pretty similar personnel. Yeah, so it's pretty much the same two teams going against each other. And we went from scoring 43 and putting up 600 yards of offense to really barely being able to move the ball at all other than when they put in, you know, third string and walk on and scrubs. Other than that, we couldn't move the ball. And I really don't know how we can – I mean, I know Coach said a few minutes ago Donnie Kirkpatrick was a great coach. Well, I mean, a lot of times it comes down to the results, and where are the results? I mean, the offense is stagnant. We can't move it against any team with a decent defense. Holton throws twice as many picks as he throws touchdowns. (laughs) I mean, I just I haven't seen any progression in the last two years. And when you look at our receiver core, those guys couldn't get open against me. I mean, C.J. Johnson, did he even have a catch tonight? Pro, Sneed, I mean, they're good for the little five-yard, you know, dump-off passes, but that's all they're going to get is five yards. They're not game-breakers. Uh, Umatosho, he couldn't catch a cold in Alaska. I mean, I just don't understand if we don't change offensive coordinators after the season what Mike Houston is doing. All right, there's and Garrett. talked about him being a great coach, but, yeah. I, you know, first year at JMU, he comes in, takes somebody else's recruits, wins a natty. Next year, he doesn't make it to the national championship game. The next year, he gets bounced in the first round, and then we pay him a lot of money to come here. So I'm just saying, I mean, if Coach can tell me, you know, the signs that he sees that says, hey, Mike Houston's making a big difference, Great, let me know. But from on field performance, I've seen this regress. Well, I Thanks. think I think you made a lot of good points, and everything you said I could tell was coming from your heart. Uh, I uh, I'm disappointed in the way they're playing this year. Uh, one thing I try to do is be honest. Uh, I do think that they have <clears throat> regressed. I'm kind of shocked that we haven't played better this year uh, can't explain it because I don't ever go to inside that building I haven't been inside that building since I walked out of it don't plan on ever going back in it uh, but I do love football and I love East Carolina and I hope they win but uh, I told my wife today watching the game I said something's wrong somewhere alright uh, thank you for the call one more before we take a time out let's go to Brian and Raleigh hey Brian Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. I, you know, I, I, just a couple of points. I think number one, we're, we're playing the number seven team in the country. So everyone who says you know Cincinnati's not that good, but they should go to a January bowl game. Pretty sure those bowl games are for like the top teams in the country. So I don't know how you could say Cincinnati's not that good and then say they deserve to go to a January bowl game. Um, the I don't know if anyone else has said this. There's a guy who writes, his name is Chad Brindell. He said that the fake punt was not a pre-snap play, that a kid on the field made the call. And um, in the press conference, the Cincinnati coach, the first thing he did was apologize for the fake punt. So I don't know if anybody has said anything about that um, or, or messaged it, but the kids made the call on the field. Um, but I agree with everybody. You got to stop them. You, you got to be ready, right? You got to be ready. You know, they're giving the senior walk on a chance to carry the ball on senior night right up the middle to give the guy a touch and he goes for 75 yards. You know, that's not just, just not okay. Um, so yeah, maybe there has been some regression, but I think we have to remember these guys are good. I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily sure that it's coach Houston's problem. I think you have to look at it and say that we have talent deficiencies. Uh, I think it's plain and obvious that we've, we've been talking about that. We have some, some folks in skilled positions that can do some things, uh, but we have deficiencies, and it showed tonight. And 
Cincinnati was a team that didn't respect ECU tonight, and they gave it to them. And you could see them dancing and laughing on the sidelines, and I think that really hurt a lot of people, and it hurt a lot of people's feelings, especially after the long touchdown run. They run out on the field, they're all jumping around, they're all high-fiving, and we haven't, we, ECU people, we haven't had that feeling in a long time. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm like everyone else. You know, it's a loss. We lost again. That's unfortunate. We lost to a very good team, and they gave it to us good. Um, you know, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, they're, they're our team. You know, if you, if you want to support the team, that's fine. But you, you do have to have a, a, a bigger picture uh, perception here that this thing, like Coach Smith said, there's something wrong. This thing was run into the ground. You know, and the athletic office is bleeding money. And so they, they need to make some, some major changes. And if getting football back to get some additional funding into the school is going to make a difference, then, then maybe that will help. But, uh, you know, there has been, you know, definitely been some regression. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the same time, they, I think um, to a large extent, they need better players. You know, they need better players. They need to not throw interceptions. You know, they need to make tackles, and, and they, you know, I think that's really what it comes down to, you know, at the end of the day. So, uh, you know, thanks for what you do. You know, I'm going to cheer for them and, and hope they win as well. Uh, you know, but at the same time, you know, I'm you know, disappointed about what happened with the, as the CU coach. Uh, you know, hopefully he talks to the kid about, you know, even if you see it, sometimes it's not the appropriate time to use it. Um, and go Pirates. Okay. All right. Thanks, thanks Brian. Yeah, and thanks for bringing that to our attention. Uh, I did see that on Twitter. I hadn't mentioned it yet that uh, that was that, that according to Luke Fickle, that was not a called fake pun. It was something a player noticed on the field, and and sure enough, he noticed it because there was nobody there uh, to make the tackle. But Brian, with a lot of thoughts there. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. We have one open line. Kyle, Dale, Johnny, hang on. We'll get to you next on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. We're back after this. The holiday season is here, and Sam Jones Barbecue will take the stress off of your brain and put some goodness on your table this year with our special meal packages. This is Sam Jones, and our Thanksgiving heat and serve meal packages include whole smoked turkey breast, mac and cheese, green bean casserole, baked beans, and 12 potato muffins, including whole pecan pie and a bottle of our sweet barbecue sauce. Place your order now at samjonesbarbecue.com and plan your time for convenient curbside pickup. From our family to yours, happy holidays. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! University Book Exchange UPE for ECU University Book Exchange UBE and PirateWear.com offers a large selection of ECU apparel. There's a new selection of hats, t-shirts, and tailgate supplies. Plus, the online store at PirateWear.com has been redesigned to serve you better. UBE and PirateWear.com, located in the heart of Uptown Greenville and proud supporters of the Pirates for over 35 years. Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top-rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank. FNB member FDIC. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. With Greenville Auto World, cross some hardies at Bells Fork. Yo creí 
Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast, casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients, from our toppings bars, or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick, healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. In studio with Gloria from Kinetic Physical Therapy, what kind of wellness services do you guys offer? We have massage therapy with your choice of either a relaxation massage, a therapeutic stretching session, or a prenatal massage. We have foot reflexology. We partner with Pirate Cryo for cryotherapy, also known as cold therapy, and we have health and wellness coaching. And if you're interested in holistic body therapy and saving money, we encourage you to check out our wellness membership plan where you can have all of our wellness services at a constant discounted price. You can learn more today at kptonline.com. This is assistant football coach Drew Dudzik, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250. You know the number by now because lines are locked and loaded here at 12-12 a.m. On a Saturday morning. Coach, we got some passionate Pirate fans out there. Amen. That's good. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, passion and uh, anger, sadness, whatever is better than apathy. Uh, that is for sure. Bobby, Kyle, Dale, hang on. Let's go to Johnny in Wilmington. Hey, Johnny. Clip. What? Coach Smith. Yes. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, guys. First of all, I need to apologize for my guy that called in early tonight, Cameron, using the Lord's name in vain like that three times. You ain't got to do that, man. Come on. Anyway, uh, I agree with everybody talking about the quarterback situation tonight, but I got a uh, question for the coach tonight. There were several times tonight, four or five times, that we had their quarterback pretty much sacked. Uh, defensive line was rushing them good, and he was scrambled. And he, you know, he'd get the first down. You know, he'd get 15, 20 yards or whatever, but – my co- my question to you, Coach Smith, is you know whose responsibility is that on the defense? Is I mean because uh, like I said, it happened so many times tonight. I mean it was, it was kind of embarrassing a little bit, but anyway, I just want to hang up and listen to what you got to say on that. But I thought uh, the defensive line overall tonight played pretty good for us. When you rush, when you rush the quarterback, you know. Your your two outside rushers. Most you know if you're sending four, you should have two people rushing the outside shoulder of the quarterback to contain him, and the two inside rushers, you know, are rushing at his inside. Uh, now he 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 got some creases and he ran, but as soon as he passes the line of scrimmage, you know those linebackers has to come and, and make a tackle. Hopefully, you know, and this kid now is a really good athlete and he's going to play on Sundays. Uh, but you know he's a good runner. Uh, we got creased a few times on those runs. And then as soon as those linebackers you know see it, they got to come back up and try to make the tackle. But when the quarterback scrambles, the receivers see that they come back and try to block. So you know it's like I always told my kids: it's either run or pass. <laughs> you know, and uh, you know scrambling quarterback that can run is a headache. Now, one thing they could have done was to rush the four and take one of the linebackers that has one of the the hook area, you know, have him kind of spy the quarterback. You can do that. Or you can rush three, and one of the defensive linemen can take three steps, you know, engage his guy and drop back and now mirror the quarterback to keep him, to tackle him if he tries to scramble. Chandler, we were watching one of those plays where they uh, Ritter ran it for a first down, and ECU had at least one. It looked like they almost had two linebackers as spies, and they dropped back to about 15 or 20 yards. And by the time they finally tackled Ritter, it was too late. It was a first down. Yep. So I, I think they had designs to to stop him, but it, it wasn't executed properly. And, and look, he, he's a handful. He ran for over 100 yards on ECU last year. You kind of knew it was coming. Uh, but that that again, I said it to you, Coach, when you were here uh, yesterday on Pirate Radio Live. Those dual threat quarterbacks keep you up late at night. Yeah, they do. And clip, we talked about this in the pregame show. You know, we were worried about this, and 
those plays, a lot of those plays happen on the third and manageable for the defense. You know, yeah. third and long. Third and eight, yeah. third and ten, yeah. third and twelve. <laughs> and uh and couldn't get off the field. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. Dale is up in Greenville. Hey Dale. Hey. Hey guys. Uh, how y'all doing? Okay, um uh good to call in. Uh, I've always got my power flag flying on my car, my S U V here in Greenville. Um All right. but uh uh, I love coaching staff, uh, Mike Houston, and, uh, uh, Shank Weiler. Uh, um, we can run the ball. I was happy to see that. And I uh, just, uh, just want to tell everybody, you know, just hang in there. Just unprecedented times right now. There's no hardly no fans in the stands. But uh, I think the kids are playing great. And, uh, and uh uh, oh, oh, one thing. I think nobody has brought... I've listened to the whole show here, which I always do. I don't think nobody's brought this up. One... Uh, okay, it was five minutes left to go in the first half, and we almost had kicked it. That's that's the the only thing that I had a little bit of issue with. Uh, I don't know. What do y'all got to think about that? Yeah, they did that after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on a field goal, I believe. Right, Chandler? And we were wondering... On that play, it happened after the play, and we were hoping and and thinking maybe we could tack it on to the field goal and get a first down, but it did happen after the play. ECU moves the ball up 15 yards on the kickoff. They they figure at that point we're going to, even if they recover this onside, it won't be great field position. So they took a risk, and it didn't work out. I'm gonna be honest. I like the aggressiveness. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I would, I would go for it there. I mean, you're down at the at the time. What were we down, Clip? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen at the time. Uh, Some, yeah, yeah. So I would go for it in that situation. And I mean, and, and unfortunately, you, we had a guy get a targeting call on that play, and then um, there was a situation that was also there was multiple times the night where the referees kind of got together and they talked for forever, mm. and that was one where I didn't know if they were talking about a potential offsides on us. And I didn't even know. And that was also another situation there where I think that they didn't catch the targeting call. They get a buzzer, and they're like, hey, I think we got a targeting call here. And that was our second of the night. 317-1250, the number. Shirley, what you want to do? You want to take Kyle in LaGrange. Hey, Kyle. What's going on, Cliff, uh, Coach? Um, man, uh calls all over the place tonight. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> Cincinnati's number seven in the country. We're twenty eight point hundred dollars. So I don't know what we thought was going to happen. Um, they they held uh, they held you know uh, Memphis to ten. They held um, oh uh, SMU I believe fourteen. This they is the most points 10. a team and a FBS team has scored against them all year. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. And, and and their and their pass defense. They've run two passing touchdowns all year. Which I Rick, you know, Coach Smith, obviously secondary guru have you ever heard of that a team giving up two passing touchdowns all year particularly in this day and age of college football no that i saw that too and i'm sitting there what in the world's going on in fact you said coach yesterday that today in college football you don't see any of the numbers cincinnati is putting up on defense right now no no cincinnati has the best defense in the country in my opinion and i I do think holton played poorly tonight I, i think our receivers overall have been disappointing this year. I think C.J. Johnson has regressed. Um, you know, I, I just overall, this receiving core has shown us. You know, it, it's like, and part of it again. I don't want to. I don't want to be too dramatic. I think part of it is Patty. But to me, it's like we're still in Tulsa. We, we have not. We have not gotten over that loss. You know, last week against Tulane, I do think that was a bit of a matchup issue. Where Tulane's D line was really good, and we couldn't run the ball against them. But tonight we could run the ball, and, and you know, I kind of what I always thought with Baylor's in this receiving core is if we could get a running game going, that we'd be fine. And you know, that has been the case this year against against South Florida, against Navy, against Tulsa. If you can run the ball, you, you can do something, and we could run it tonight. But just just couldn't do anything with the passing game and. I, I, like I said, I want to give Cincinnati a lot of credit for that because their pass defense is unreal. But, man, Holden made some bad decisions tonight. And sometimes our passing plays, to me, just look so predictable. And and I, I don't know if we can be more creative, maybe move C.J. into the slot some, uh, move Schneid around on the field. You know, they always line up in the exact same spots. It, it's, it's very predictable. I think we need to, to 
get more creative. And overall, you know, I don't want to use the term gimmick, but you know, when we, when we had Lincoln here, it was it was creative offense, you know, kind of a gimmicky offense. And I don't know that we don't need to do something more along those lines until we can get the talent up a little bit. We've got some pieces. We got two good running backs, but we're just not there yet. Um, next weekend we play Temple. Temple's a much more winnable game. Uh, Temple struggled this year. It's a place we haven't won at in a long time. Um, we need to find a way to try to go win that game. And I hope the guys are going in the mouth after this one because it got ugly. I hope they can pick themselves up and and try to go up to Philadelphia and figure out a way to win it. And it's, you know, I don't I don't think RC is the answer at this point. Um, you know, if Holton next week against Temple. <laughs> throw three interceptions and no touchdowns again and I might say play Garcia against us of you but I'd like to think Holton will put up uh, better numbers next week particularly if we can run the ball against Temple like we did tonight against Cincinnati I would think we have a better passing game because of that and uh, just one other thing is something Tom brought up earlier about big picture with this program financially and the university financially and in HSC East Carolina there's a lot of school situation right now because of COVID but we, we had debt issues before COVID um, thanks to bad decisions by Jeffrey Comper. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I don't know what could be done at the, at the state level where we can use some money from the education side temporarily to fund athletics. There's a lot of money at East Carolina. It's just over on the education side. Um, that's something that I'd, I'd like to see done temporarily, um, for all the UNC system schools over the next couple of years while we're dealing with the debt caused by this pandemic. Because I'm telling you right now, you know, we're not going to be able to sell basketball tickets either. This thing's going to keep getting worse, and that we believe campaign people need to give to it because we're digging ourselves a deep hole, and it's going to take a long time to dig out, and people need to get creative, man. we got to come up with some ways to, to, to get some money and to get some revenue going in our athletic program. Go Pirates. Kyle wants to be more creative within the athletic program. Also wants the offense to be more creative. Uh, coach moving forward next week against Temple. So, a lot of thoughts there. Well, you know, the kids got to get over this one. And I, I mentioned it last week. Temple is a tough trip. Uh, they're going to play in that NFL stadium. Empty. And it's going to be in the shade. It's going to be cold. It's going to be depressing. Uh, there will be 50 people in the stands for Temple, and we might have more than them. I know the time I went up there, we had more fans than they had. And that's on a regular game. Now, I don't know what the restrictions are up there, but it's not going to be much different no, than a regular they game. They don't need any restrictions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but, you know, that, and that's a tough, tough place to play for the kids. Yeah. And. You know, I hope that they go up there and can win it. Uh, I know Temple's not very good this year, but we're not very good this year either. So, uh, you know, we'll go up there and whoever scores the most points will win. That is true. 317-1250. Bobby is up in Florida. Hey, Bobby. Hey, good evening, guys. Um, I want to kind of change what I want to talk about initially. You know, a caller back four or five callers ago mentioned you know, we think we're Alabama or we're supposed to beat Alabama or some, some crap like that. And and I think he's way out of bounds. You know, we came into this new conference six years ago, and it was really old conference USA. You know, a handful of schools have been there a year, year before we were. And, of course, Cincinnati, USF, you kind of been in there for a decade at that point or more. And, you know, we just want we, we want to compete. And, you know, the last five years, we've had a lot of blowouts that were similar tonight where we just weren't competitive. You know, losing sucks, but not competing is even worse. And when you lose 55 to 10, you know, 48 to 10, some of the butt kickings we've taken the last four or five years, it just stinks. We owned, six years ago, we owned UCF. We owned Tulsa. We owned Memphis. We own, you know, Cincinnati dating back to before they left and went to the Big East in 2004, I think that was. We were, we were better programs than, way, than they were. And now, you know, with what's going on with our university, the leadership, the administration, we've, we've been in just a terrible situation, particularly football-related, for the last five or six years, and it just really stinks. We don't think we're Alabama. We'd love to be Alabama. But I think the majority of our fans just want to, Get out there and compete. And when you lose 55 to 10 on national TV on a Friday night or, you know, you get your butt kicked a couple years ago by 
you know, the USF of the world, it's, it's pretty depressing and it's, it gets you down. We just want to compete and, and, and get back to where we were in 2013, 2014, 2008, 29, or 2009. That's what we're looking for. And, and, and you know, I think we're going to get there with Coach Houston. I really do. I believe in him. I think, you know, one of the callers says we don't have wide receivers. That's baloney. You know, between Pro and Snead, they're good receivers. You know, I think uh, CJ, he's got, he, he drops too many passes. I mean, yeah, I don't know if he dropped one one night or not, but between him and Omatosho, every game they're both dropping one or two. It's been really kind of discouraging on that point. It seems like it's always third and five they drop a 10-yard pass. You know, it's really the timing of some of these drops has been really uh, hurtful to the team. But, you know, I think we got a great combination of running backs in the back backfield. They're freshmen. I mean, I think there's great things happening there. But really, when I watch our team and, and – if you go back to the Georgia State game, what, five or six weeks ago, I mean, Georgia State dominated us at the line of scrimmage. And I can tell you, I mean, that, that should never happen. But it's, 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 it's reflective of where we are as a program and what's happened in the last three or four years. You know, a couple of years from now, we're, if we play Georgia State, I don't know where they're on the schedule, we're going to blow their doors open. But right now, that, that we're losing in the trenches almost every week. We bounced back from Georgia State. We dominated South Florida. But since then, I mean, you know, we know what happened to Tulsa. But, you know, we're, we're really struggling in the trenches. Holton's running for his life a lot of the time. Granted, he's not played outstanding the last couple of weeks. But I, I just want to say, I think the future is bright. We just got to suck it up for this year and say, hey, you know, we're not going to have a winning record. But I really think next year and the year after with Coach Houston, the recruiting they're doing, the coaching they're getting, things are looking up. We're just going to have to take one more year of kind of, it tastes really bad, but the future is bright. Don't give up on ECU. We're going to be back, and we're going to be a football school again before you know it. We just got to take a few more body blows, and then things are on the upward swing. So have a great night. As always, go Pirates. At any day, I'm going to be a Pirate than a Tar Heel. So go Pirates, and we're on the way back. Bobby, you always have good calls down in Florida. Another one there. And uh, he talks about the issues we have. He says we have to be patient and uh his call reminded me of a uh, tweet i got it said serious question for pirate nation is it worth staying in the american for the money if it means we get dominated year in year out or would you rather be back in conference usa winning at least six games every year just the thought and and to what bobby said when we first got to conference uh, to the american and and coach you were here you know we were we were winning ball games. We were in ball games, and decisions that were made here by you know by the AD and and a coaching hire and everything since then has put us at the bottom. You know we were ahead of UConn. Now UConn's gone. We're ahead of South Florida, but everybody else is ahead of us. And <laughs> I just don't think it's impossible to get back to the middle and back to the top because, as he said, we used to. You were here. We beat yeah. Tulsa. We beat UCF. We beat those teams that are yeah. beating us right now. Cincinnati, another one that we beat. I just feel like it's cyclical, right? Like we we can get back there. We're not going to be at the bottom forever. Well, I do this every week, and uh, let's just look at the Cincinnati defense real quick here. Defensive end, fifth year player. Defensive tackle, fifth year player. Defensive end, fifth year player. Will linebacker number twenty seven, fifth year player. Middle linebacker, number 41, fifth-year player. Uh, number eight, fifth-year player. Number 12, a corner, third-year player. Number five, a strong safety, fifth-year player. Free safety, number one, fifth-year player. Number uh, seven, a corner, four-year player. Number nine, a three-year player. That's the problem, guys. We played a bunch of grown men. <clears throat> we had they, – they got nine, five – year players on their defense and what do we got three seniors yeah let me uh let me pull this game up too real quick coach what's that say 48 20 ecu 48 cincinnati 20 this is 2017 this is a few years ago yeah we beat the brakes off of cincinnati Mm -hmm. i mean it it's not this way forever and uh that was before luke fickle Got his guy. Those guys you're talking yeah. about 
got them in, got them playing, got them. But I mean, they are, you know, in his first year, he struggled. Exactly. Uh, that's what it is. Yeah, that's around here, but, around that time. But but when you're playing with guys that have been in your program, I mean, what, how many was that? How many did I count there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Eight guys been in the program four or five years, and then he's got a junior and a redshirt sophomore. That's on his defense. That's why his defense is pretty good. Uh, now, offensively, they're not, they weren't, you know, they're not as old, but they had, uh, they got a graduate student who's in his fifth year. I'm sorry, his sixth year. Then they had two redshirt seniors there in their fifth year, and four redshirt juniors in their fourth year, and then three juniors. So, I mean, and uh, I think I figured out they had 19 upperclassmen, juniors and seniors, versus our seven. <laughs> Ricky says if we're in Conference USA, we still wouldn't win more than four games this year. I don't know if that's true or not. We're talking hypotheticals, but I don't think we're beating Marshall this year. Willie Taggart's FAU team is now 4-1. and one. Can we beat UAB? Can we beat Skip and Louisiana Tech? Uh, Rick Stock still of Middle Tennessee. I, I don't know. I, we win a few games, but the point is, no matter what league we're in right now, we're going to get beat, and then we got to we got to do what what what's on that folder right there. The yeah. Rick Smith guy. We got to get older. We got to get more old. mature. We got to get stronger, and then got to got to stay within the program, retain those players, and build a program. We got to get old and stay old. Thank you, Joe Dooley. Yeah. That's what we got to do. And uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm speaking out of turn here, but uh, I've been on staffs that have been together. You know, when when Skip came here, that whole staff stayed with him for five years, except for one coach left. Uh, This defensive staff, if I'm not mistaken, is all new. There, I, I think you're right. I think the whole defensive staff is new. I know at least and, uh, four of them are. I think Tesh moved from a defensive spot to special teams. But, but you know, you got Tesh went from special teams to defensive to teams. a defensive spot. That's right. Yeah. So he was on the staff last year, yeah. but he wasn't on defense. So what I'm saying is, you got defensive coaches. You know, three. Well, how many months ago? Six months ago, I guess in January or February. Yeah. They're meeting these kids for the first time. They, uh, we didn't get spring, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, nobody else did, you know, in the country. But we didn't have spring practice. Now, that's not going to hurt a team as much with older coaches that have been together, you know, for years. But you have a new coach trying to get a new. But you got a whole in. new yeah. defensive staff in yeah. your whole new defensive staff. They don't have spring practice. They don't go on the field until. Three, uh, 29 days before the first game uh, in the fall. Here's a good one. Coach Smith, this is your fault. You know why? Y'all left and went to South Florida all those years ago. <laughs> I didn't want to leave, but let me explain something. When when Skip left, the new guy was hired, and I didn't have a job. Okay? <laughs> and Skip, Skip called me on a Sunday and said, the plane leaves at 3. If you want a job, get your ass on it. And Rick Smith was <laughs> on it. You were on it. Jay I was obviously joking about that. That was yeah, funny, I Jay. But I know. Yeah. You know. I was on it. Shank was on it. And uh, luckily, Donnie uh, was left behind with his luggage. He was still yeah. on the uh, the tarmac there. I know four of us were on that plane. Yeah. All right. Uh, good stuff, Jay. We'll take a timeout. Come back. More to go on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Calling Show. We have open lines if you want to jump in. We're back after this. Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hey, Pirate Nation, Warren's Hot Dogs, two locations are open for business in Greenville and Chocowinity. Both locations have drive through windows, so stop by today for hot dogs, pizzas, subs, apple and peach turnovers, homemade lemonade, and breakfast in Chocowinity, featuring homemade cheese, ham, and chicken biscuits, plus sausage dogs, and more. Warren's in Greenville, across from Ron Ayers Motorsports, and in Chocowinity, next to the fire department. Warren's Hot Dogs, Want some? Get some. Weekdays are a great time to visit North Carolina State Parks. The best time to learn about nature is to be able to look, listen, and feel its natural beauty. 
A visit to the North Carolina State Parks is perfect for homeschoolers, scout groups, and teachers looking for a fun field trip during the week. You'll be amazed at all the natural wildlife you'll see when you experience the beauty of each North Carolina State Park. Visit ncparks.gov to get all the information on the closest park near you. If you are push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports. It will guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. Do you think you might have been exposed to COVID-19? Maybe you're planning to visit parents, family, or friends. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers easy solutions to COVID-19 testing. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Biden Hospital on Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. Bostick Sug Furniture is overstacked and overstocked. Overflowing inventory means clear out prices. Hurry in and take advantage of the biggest and best deals throughout our showroom. Save up to 20% off the best furniture brands. Lazy Boy, Bassett, Kincaid, Rowe, and Restonic Mattresses. Plus, just for this sale, 12 months special financing or choose 48 months special financing. There's savings on top of savings. We're overstacked and overstocked. And that means big savings for you at Bostick Sug Furniture. The fun place to dine out with friends and family is Familia. Familia has something for everyone and offers favorites like New York style pizza, lasagna, homemade meatballs, plus new specials like chicken parm alfredo, mahi fish and chips, chicken piccata, veggie burger, butternut squash ravioli, and more. If you need food to go, Familia's drive through window is open and ready for all takeout orders. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. Hey, Pirate fans, get ready for a winning season and get things done right with the John Deere Tractor Package from Quality Equipment. You can't afford to lose on your home turf, so we'll help you get the driveway done right at the right price. Right now, our 1023E driveway package starts as low as $148 per month. So get quality done right before every ECU football weekend. Visit qualityequip.com. Offer ends 12-31-2020. Subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Pirate Radio sounds different. Difference is good. We are all the same. You'll be ashamed. Because different is good. Oh, yeah. Pirate Pirate Radio. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, we have open lines for the first time tonight, this morning. 317-1250 if you want to jump in. ECU falls tonight 55-17 to Cincinnati. Billy Weaver is hanging on the Fixed NC Live line, WITN Sports Director. What's up, Weave? Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, wasn't a whole lot pretty about it, that's for sure. A lot of questionable calls a lot of weird things happen of course everybody's you know talking about the uh the fake punt and kind of how that all went and i would love to have known and and could you know really hear what was said between uh, the two head coaches after the game at midfield and uh, you know coach houston said that's between him and uh, luke fickle so uh i i can only imagine what was said uh in in that uh, in that meeting yeah, and uh, you had any of those after games, Coach, uh, conversations with other coaches about things that happened during a game? Yeah, but, you know, let's go. I coached the punters at Georgia Tech for four years, and I coached the punters at South Florida. As a coach, coaching the punter, you teach him to look for certain things, and he has a right, or he's coached if they line up a certain way, 
and they don't have enough people on the line of scrimmage, he's taught to automatically run the football. And I'm telling you, on that play, Coach Fickle had nothing to do with that call except he's coached it all season long. If you see this particular <clears throat> defensive alignment and we're punting the ball, then you keep it and run. The player in that case is probably not thinking about the situation no. and the score and the clock. He he's see just it. He's seeing, wow, this, this is, is open. This is what I've been coached to do. Yeah. Uh, they've got a guy on the center, and they got nobody else in the middle except five techniques outside the tackles. I'm going to make the magic call. They're going to snap the ball, and I'm going to run it, and they're going to run block up front. That's after, what happened. After that weave, you had Cincinnati with the ball. They could have taken a knee. They run the ball. Again, it's on ECU to stop them. But uh, in that case, they could have taken a knee. I, I don't know. Maybe the conversation was about that as well. But either way, Pirates got their butt kicked tonight. Yeah, it could have been, and and I agree with Coach wholeheartedly. And as, as a matter of fact, that was a point that I was going to bring up, that it was probably not called uh, by the coaching staff because, you know, I was a punter back in the day, and I can remember, you know, if there was a certain alignment, you you just made the call. And as a player, you're out there just trying to make plays. And, you know, it kind of would fall back on the player if that that call is – if that's there. You can you can bet in the in the film session on Sunday – coach is going to call that out if, if they don't run that play and say, you know, we've, we've been, we've coached you guys on this time and time again. It was there. You didn't take it. Um, so right. I, I, to- I totally understand that. Billy, a couple games left. Pirates got to regroup, get ready for Temple, a team that has been a nemesis uh, of ECU over the years. And you just hope, and we talked about it going into this game after the Tulane loss, that there's still something to play for. You're, you're playing for pride. You're playing – for your starting spots, you're playing for tape for pro scouts to look at. So there is a lot to play for, but you got to hope that the, the staff can continue to try to build on this thing and keep the guys focused as we head down the stretch here of the season. Yeah, I mean they've got to go in and play well. Uh, that's the bottom line. Is you know I, I heard you guys earlier talking about you know what the atmosphere is going to be like up there, but you know the I, I guess kind of it's a double edged sword with this one you know we used to talk about that all the time going to places like UAB and Temple yeah. and, you know you're playing in a big NFL stadium but this year is such a a weird year with covid that i think these players not just these players but players all over the country are used to this by now um this is not you know this is not out of the out of the norm so to speak so maybe that plays into the favor of east carolina where in the past and you know you're going into an empty stadium there's no atmosphere you can't you have a hard time you know getting excited getting pumped up and stuff we've done that at, at uab and tulane and places like that where you're playing in these big huge stadiums and there's nobody there this year is a little bit different because the players are used to it now because there aren't any fans allowed there's not a whole you know they're having to generate their own excitement so hopefully they can go up there and play well um, it's not, you know, it's not a place East Carolina's had a whole lot of success. Uh, Temple's not a very good football team. This is one, you, you know, you got to kind of dig down deep and you got to find it. And I think this is going to be a character game. I, I really do. Uh, because if East Carolina, you know, if East Carolina is to go up and, and lose to Temple, you know, they may not win another game in a one win season just, and I don't care what the circumstances are, it's just not going to go over very well. And, and it's hard to build on those. So, uh, you know, I, th- I think it's a crucial game for East Carolina, to say the least. I agree. And, uh, you know, the, the, look, ECU was 27.5 point underdogs in this one to the seventh-ranked uh, team in the country. Temple, uh, nowhere near Cincinnati. Now they are getting their quarterback back tomorrow. Russo uh, will start for Temple, so they should be a little bit better offensively. But, as you know, we've, they've struggled this year. I mean, this is another – this is a winnable game for the Pirates, a game that you should at least be in in the second half. Yeah, and you know what? That's that's you kind of touch on something that is, and I think is is really disheartening about tonight's game. To you know, not only the players, coaching staff, and, and fans, and and everyone really involved is that the way you lose? You go up there um, and you just get blown out. I mean, you know, it was fourteen seven at one point. You're thinking, okay, well, maybe this, you know, maybe we can get into a shootout like like it was last year with a forty six forty three, and it come down to a last second field goal or something, or you know, at least make it competitive. Uh, but then right after that touchdown, uh, since, uh, Cincinnati just immediately answered. And the next thing you know, it's, it's 35 seven at halftime or 35 10 or whatever it was at halftime. And, 
you know, it just it just got out of hand, uh, completely out of hand. And you you just hope that you're a little bit more competitive. Um, you know, I kind of understand that Cincinnati is in a in a different situation. They're six and zero. They're number seven in the country. There's talk about them, you know, trying to sneak into the college playoff, and and I get that. Um, but if you're East Carolina, man, that's that's just a tough pill to swallow because you know, just it was seems like just a few weeks ago, everybody's talking about okay, you know, after that Tulsa loss, this is they they should have won that game. They should have beaten Navy. We should be you know, what, three and two or three and three or whatever it was at that point in the season, we should be much better. And, you know, we finally are starting to turn the corner and then bam, you get hit with, you know, what's going on. So it's, it's been a crazy season and, you know, but, you know, and coach could tell you, coach can allude to this, you know, like anybody else can, there's nothing a win doesn't cure. And you go up to Philadelphia next week and you go in there and you go on the road and you win a game. Uh, it could do a whole lot for the confidence of these uh, these young players. And, and Mike Houston, once again tonight in the post game interview, he emphasized that these are these are young guys in there, and they're hurt. You know, they're they're not uh, they're not having a whole lot of fun in that locker room right now. But they are young, and they're building. You know, they're trying to build something. So there were some positives out of tonight's game. Got to like to see the running game um, get going. So that was nice. Uh, it just seems that East Carolina can't get all the pieces put together in the same game. Uh, you know, the the game before at Tulane, they couldn't get the running game going, but they threw the ball pretty much all over the yard. Um, this game, completely opposite. Couldn't get anything. You know, Holden had a, a down game, but they could run the ball. Uh, they had some spurts where they looked really good. So they just they just need to get, you know, all the uh, the phases of the game put together and get a win and, you know, kind of build on that. Weave, thanks for hanging out late with us tonight, man. We'll talk to you coming up this week on Pirate Radio Live and, of course, next week on the uh, Bud Light pregame tailgate. All right, guys. We'll see you. Thank you, Weave. Billy Weaver, WITN Sports Director, joining us after this 55-17 to loss tonight, Coach Smith. Well, you know, the problem is, uh, like the first series, 9-yard run, 10-yard run, 12-yard run, 8-yard run, 11-yard run, 33-yard pass, second series, 37-yard pass, 19-yard run, 25-yard quarterback scramble. Next series was we played some good defense. You know, they punt the ball after four plays. The next one is uh, six plays, 85 yards, and a touchdown. You know, minus one. Incomplete pass, third down, quarterback scrambles for 20. Then he throws a 25-yard pass, 20-yard pass, 23-yard run, touchdown. Next series, they get the ball on the 45-yard line, one play, 45-yard touchdown. You just can't give up yardage, you know, 45-yard plays, 10-yard plays. Uh, You know, the next series, 12 yards, 15 yards. Uh, Next series, 15 yards. Next series, 13 yards. Next series, 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 10, 14, 12. Next series, 6, 6, 14, 20, 11, 11. I mean... I feel like I'm a DB in your uh, your room right now, and you going over the cold hard facts of what just happened in the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I watch the game, I take notes, and uh, hell, we didn't stop them on defense. Championships are won on defense, and you're giving up that many big plays. I would rip their butt. It would be I a. Mean, I would allow my defense to give one play up. One run over 15 yards, they could meet their goal on defense, and one pass over 25. Two passes over 25, they didn't meet their goal. Two runs over 15 yards, they didn't make their goal. And there was a lot of times we didn't. But they understood. No long runs, no long passes. If they have a 12-play drive and they go 80 yards, bless their heart, pat them on the back. William Smith says, don't get beat deep. Rick Smith had practiced <laughs> back in the day. Uh, I, I don't know if they were so worried about Ritter running the ball, but there were a lot of receivers running free for a lot of the night tonight. Ritter is not the most accurate passer, but when nobody is five, eight yards around the receiver, it's easy to, to connect with them. Same thing last week. Same route. Corner route. 
and there's nobody outside the corner out. I mean, I'm looking, and there's a safety and a corner on the hash mark, and he's catching it at the top of the numbers, which is seven yards outside the hash mark, and nobody's outside of him. And then on the, another drive, the same thing happened, and I'm trying to figure out where in the where in the hell is the corner, <laughs> you know, or the safety? Somebody, anybody, you know. anybody. You know. I hate to be critical of coaches, but yeah. I mean, I've I've been criticized, so I get a chance to criticize them a little bit. How's your chance after all these years? Yeah. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. Last call for your calls. We're with you until the last caller is served. So if you want to jump in, you can do so right now. Three one seven twelve fifty. We're back on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call In Show after this. Sawyer's Fun Park is now open in Greenville. This state-of-the-art 40,000 square foot facility features a two-story LED interactive laser tag, a one-of-a-kind two-story ninja course, a ropes course with a 180 degree zip line, and it's only one of five in the country that are indoors. Multiple climbing walls, a super cool arcade with 40 plus games, and a brand new full service cafe and bar for adults. Visit the brand new Sawyer's Fun Park, now open, located right behind ARU on Corey Road. Road, Greenville. It's bow time. <laughs> the barbecue sandwich from Bojangles is back. Wait, wait. Bojangles has barbecue? Yeah, keep going. Well, okay then. <clears throat> We're talking tender pulled pork with a tangy Carolina vinegar kick. Unforgettably topped with our country coleslaw, all on perfectly toasted buns. So if you're like me and missed it last time, get your hands on a barbecue sandwich combo pronto it's bow time let us help you get back to business this is donald stocks and justin judge of pip of eastern north carolina we're ready to assist your business with branded ppe would you like face masks with your logo we can do that plus custom social distancing signage now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts whether it's cutting edge contactless touchless marketing or traditional direct mail we can do it all we are pip Pip of eastern Eastern North North Carolina. carolina Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now, during hurricane season, is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. Times 12. Order the Jersey Mike's catering box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Love Jersey Mike's subs? Love them times 12 with our new catering box. Packed full of a dozen individually wrapped subs. They're yours for the sharing. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Banking is banking until service is not the same. This is Eric Clark from Select Bank and Trust, and this year has been unusual, but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us, our customers. When businesses needed access to the Paycheck Protection Program, our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? We are Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Yo, ho, you're listening to Pirate Radio. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Post Game Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. Last call for your calls, 317-1250 on the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show. Let's get our Brown and Wood drive of the game. Brought to you by Brown and Wood, serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for over 83 years. Brown and Wood has four brands, three generations, two showrooms, one goal, and that goal is you leave a happy customer every time. Brown and Wood on Greenville Boulevard and online at brownandwoodauto.com. Keaton Mitchell had a great night for the Pirates. Let's go with his 18-yard run that capped off a three-play, 58-yard drive. In fact, that was the Keaton Mitchell drive. 
He had a run, a catch, and a run for a touchdown, and at that point, it made it 14-7. to And uh, how about the freshman tonight, his first 100-yard game as a Pirate? Coach, we look for positives wherever we can get them. We got two good freshman running yeah, backs to move forward good. with. Yeah. So uh, happy about that. Chandler, you got a question for Coach Smith? Yeah, Coach, I got a question for you. Uh, we've seen it time and time again this season where, and Malik Fleming was a, a victim of this tonight, but we've seen a lot of times where our DBs have lost their footing. Is that something that you, you teach? Is that like a technique thing, or is that like a speed thing where the receiver's just beating them off the ball or uh, on the route? So, I mean, w- what is the problem there? We've seen it a lot, of, uh, a lot this season. I I have no idea except maybe they need to work on that at practice. Uh, you know, the first thing I did at practice was you know get my guys in a good stance, and I would put the you know there'd be two of them going. I'd put the DB five yards from the from the other DB, and that uh, that DB was like a wide receiver, and I'd tell him, "Oh, you gonna run as fast as you can for twenty yards," and I wouldn't let the defensive back get out of his back pedal you know for so we had to back pedal 15 yards faster than that other kid could run 20 yards running forward and that's how we got better at footing and then the next drill we would do is like after five or ten yards that receiver would stop and we had to plant stop foot dry foot and you know just always working on body balance you know and right. you just as a defensive back you just can't fall yeah. down right I mean, there's been plenty of times this year where we've seen an open receiver and we go, well, what, what happened there? And they show the replay, and then there's a pirate going down, slipping down. And, yeah. and you kind of answer my next question. What are the drills that can help prevent that? And I think you just answered that yeah. question. Well, my kids hated their 15 minutes of hell drills. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and that leads to – them liking you at the end of your career coach because yeah. we've talked to a lot of guys dakota marshall and uh uh spider travis simmons and all those guys really respect you and the job you did but i don't think they liked you as much at the time no they didn't <laughs> but you know it was a it was a great 40 something year career i loved yeah. every minute of it we're glad to have you here breaking it down with us, Coach, adding to the uh, the post-game show. I know the callers and listeners do, too. And even if they don't agree with you, which, I mean, I think a lot of them do, but even if yeah. they don't, you have your insight as the, the coaching perspective on it and what you've seen and, and what you know over the years. So we appreciate you hanging out with us late night tonight. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. You take the weekend off. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I think there was a uh, I think there was a bunch of callers tonight to call in about the the uh, punt situation yeah. and all that, and uh, then they heard Coach Smith, you know, tell the truth, and uh, they might have changed up their call and their topic of discussion tonight. But yeah, I mean, I thought it was neat that you said first of all you wouldn't have made the call, and and t- it turns out it sounds like the player on the field made the call yeah. and not their coach. And, and but he, at the same time, you said it's our job to stop it, no matter what they that's call. Right. Yeah. And I totally agree with that. Yeah. And, and yeah. what I hear from that is a coach that's coached for a long time and yeah. has a lot of knowledge of the game it's it's a simple game the either run or the pass that's right yep and if it's a run you got to stop it if it's a pass you got to stop it yep. i mean why make it complicated no matter what the score or the time is that's right they got 11 guys and you got 11 guys and before your 11 guys take the field you got to prepare them better than that other coach prepared his that means year-round program weight room conditioning spring practice meetings i mean you have to do a better job in all of those areas in order to win it's a good point it don't start the day before the week before right. or even the year before just it's and then i go back to what uh what uh I, I, was it it was philip henry uh who was here with John Thompson and then here when Skip came in and I said when did you kind of feel it turning around and he said like January February like the winter workouts the off season that's when you really start to feel yeah. it and get together and the, this team missed out on that this year yeah but but the other teams did too that is true that is true somebody said that to me somewhere in town you know a couple of weeks ago and I said well every division 1 program like East Carolina had all the same rules Nobody had spring practice. 
everybody got 29 practices prior to their first game true and everybody got the two weeks during the summer to where they could you know do walkthroughs and stuff not to make an excuse what they do have is on your notes eight seniors where we got yeah, a few that, so that's, I, that's you know, the deal right it's there. a little unbalanced but yeah that's the way it is coach uh we'll be with you a little earlier in the afternoon next saturday how yeah. about that when ecu takes on temple you know another thing we mentioned is they had eight seniors but their staff's been together for four years we don't have many seniors and our defensive staff is the first year they've been together if i'm correct i'm pretty sure that and you know and it 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 takes a while you know for four guys to to get cohesive and working together and you know all that kind of stuff so i still i know we got the right head coach i know we got the right head coach and I got mad tonight. I cussed at the TV, and, you know, I get mad at the kids. But uh, I love East Carolina. I know Coach Houston and his staff's the right guys to do it. Nobody could do it any better than they're doing it. Coach Smith, thanks for uh, being with us late tonight. Shirley, great job all day today. Chan Man, awesome stuff. We will be back with you next Saturday, 8 a.m., bright and early we love nooners around here we'll be with you eight in the morning for the bud light pregame tailgate after the game 3 30 or so on the u.s sailor fifth quarter call-in show as the pirates take on the temple owls i'll talk to you monday three o'clock on pirate radio live brian bailey will be talking to donnie kirkpatrick monday at noon on the brian bailey show we will see you then everybody have a great weekend so long everybody you have been listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Join us next time for complete postgame coverage of East Carolina football exclusively on Pirate Radio.